I have to go with Stanford on this one, Pac-12 regular season champions, as well as Pac-12 tournament champions. And Stanford is blowing out teams by 25.7 points per game. They are the number one overall seed in the tournament I mean, for a reason. They have three All-Americans, not first team, but yes, third team. Can, can, can I talk about Mercedes, Go ahead, talk though? about Mercedes, Dante. He started the season, I believe, seven for seven or eight for eight, and he's currently the number one player in all the league in batting average so far. And also, you talked about filling in for somebody. Though it's not the same position, he has inserted himself in the lineup in the absence of Eloy Jimenez. Not the same and position, but still, Dante. he has come through. Yeah. I'm going to throw a curveball at you, and I'm going to I'm gonna tell you somebody who hasn't even played a Ooh. snap in the NFL. Trevor Lawrence. He is okay. going to be the number one overall draft pick for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and he's going into a great situation. I have to go with the Los Angeles Clippers here. We know the star power they have in Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, but all they need to complete their roster is a point guard. Max? Mm. You, you, brought up, to go ahead. you brought up that Juju was probably their biggest uh, need to fill this offseason, but I don't think that's the case. They haven't re-signed Villanueva yet for their line, and they also did not re-sign Bud, Bud Dupree. Who can't get past the Bud Dupree. I don't think it had their record had anything to do with their schedule. I think it had to do with Bud Dupree getting injured. You talk about possibility of losing players, but right now they're completely healthy. They're red hot. And Jackie brought up stats with Cassidy O'Malley offensively, but defensively she's one of the best in the Liberty League. She's averaging 1.7 blocks per game, which is up top up in the top five in the Liberty League, as well as 1.6 steals per game. So she does it all, not just offensively, but defensively for the Bombers. It's their point guard, Kemba Walker. His numbers are a career low. Not career low. Career low since about like his third or fourth season. Uh, down three points from last season. Seven points from the season before. It is going downhill for Kemba Walker. You also got to look at Jason Tatum. He's arguably one of the best goaltenders in the nation. She has an outstanding 481 saves inside net for the Big Red, and it does not stop there. She has shut out 10 teams this season, which leads all of the NCAA in uh, women's hockey. Nearly played perfect. And I don't think the baseball team stacks up with the softball team this year. Yes, their record's looking good, but we also have to look who they are playing against. Vassar is not that strong in baseball. I and understand. Then you, you also look at Elmira, who does not have but a great listen, history. Uh, speaking of us, yes, the Liberty League hitters, we're going to see them over and over. One thing, that one thing we're, not, we're not talking about how Rochester is clearly the best team in the league for baseball, and I don't even think it's close. So I think Ithaca is going to have such a tough time what? getting past them in the postseason. And it, it's going to be tough to get past Rochester. Yeah, I understand. Dante? I have to go with Charlie Collier of Texas. I think she me, uh, meets this team perfectly in terms of what they need, and I think she's going to be a great fit for Dallas. Yeah, Goomba Wale. He, here's like, the thing. That's going to be fantastic. Here, here's the thing with Dallas is that their number one need is not the guard position right now, and it's not necessarily a wing. It is a center, and that exact is exactly what Collier is. She mm -hmm. averaged 19 points per game this season with 11 rebounds per game. She is a double, double machine. She well, look at the game this past weekend against St. Lawrence. They blew them out by 30. St. Lawrence is right there with Ithaca at the three spot in the Liberty League. And then you look at a team like Vassar, and they beat Vassar early in the season. Mm -hmm. They took them down, and I think that Cassidy O'Malley and Grace Cannon are going to lead them to a Liberty League title. Well, you brought up a great point, Caitlin, and that was retaining your core. And that is literally exactly what the Buccaneers did of Tampa Bay. They re-signed, I believe, every single player that tested free agency pretty much uh, yes. from the Super Bowl team. And but Dante, how I was anybody going to beat Vassar? Vassar. They, they hold the tiebreaker over Vassar. So if they can beat out Vassar and continue this streak, they're looking good. They can win it all. They can win the Liberty League. Should WrestleMania be considered a professional sport? I'm going to have to go no, no, and no. I don't think it's a sport at all. Listen, I'm not getting to me. Here's what I think it comes down to. I think it comes down to the fact that in WWE, there is a known outcome. Though the viewer may yes. not know the outcome, the people who are wrestling, they know the outcome. But in an NBA game, in an NFL game, in a WNBA game, they don't know the outcome. They are playing to win and Listen, they are playing by their the, hearts Here's the out. thing, though. By the I think you guys are forgetting something. The Bucks don't have LeBron. <laughs> the Clippers don't have LeBron. The Lakers have LeBron James. Great LeBron point. is arguably the greatest basketball player of all time, him and Jordan. And I don't think that anybody's going to be able to come in his way this season. The Warriors aren't there. Curry is not playing. They are in the worst. They're one of the worst teams in the league. And who's going to stop them this year? 